Hi, Coach Val here. This lesson is all about using the vector tool in Illustrator. What does that mean? Well, we're actually going to use the pen tool, but it's important to understand the difference between an Illustrator vector and a Photoshop pixel. But if you master the, pe uh, the pen tool, then you're going to be able to use the pen tool to optimize your use of Photoshop as well as other programs that you have the pen tool in a limited capacity like InDesign. So it's important to remember the difference between Photoshop and Illustrator before we get started using the pen tool. Photoshop comes from the history of photography based on photographic film techniques in a darkroom. So we would be able to splice and do montages of individual film layers connected together. Uh, now we're using Photoshop to kind of emulate the aspects of the darkroom. Pixels, however, are only um, enough of the image in the data. So you're familiar with the term 72 DPI, which is oftentimes the file size that you find on images that are online. This is because it's a more compressed, simple, less uh, data per inch. So 70 dots, 72 dots per square inch gives you the image. If you were to need to print something, for example, or you wanted to screen print it on your shirt or what have you, uh, you need a higher dots per inch to be able to have a better quality. On the screen, there's just only so many dots per inch on our screens so that we don't need as high a resolution. But if you're using Photoshop, you always want to be in the highest resolution as possible first and then you uh, save the file name as something different and then you can shrink the file size down for the purposes of using them online. So the difference between a Photoshop pixel is that you cannot scale that to any size. You can only go as much as the pixels will allow you. So if you make something um, tiny, 72 dpi, and you want to make it larger, you're going to lose resolution and it becomes blurry because there's no data content for the computer to actually remake that. Right. So it's basically like you um, you have a photograph for your passport or your driver's license and then you photocopy that and then you want to enlarge the photocopy to use you know on a, a portrait or something like that so every time it's replicated you lose um, value now an illustrator file on the other hand is a mathematical combination it the computer is doing all of the math don't worry behind the scenes but basically it's dots connecting to each other and it's vectors so in an Illustrator document, you can make the scale as giant as a building or on a plane or tiny to fit on a pencil or a pen or a patch or what have you. So it's the same file can be scaled at any size and you don't have to worry about the resolution. So it's a really great advantage and that's why you actually see a lot of Illustrator um, files uh, out there, you know, emojis and all sorts of things where you're using illustrations rather than photographs because the illustrations can be scaled. Let's take a look at Illustrator today. If you're a novice or if you've actually used the program before but you want to get a little bit better with the vector and the pen tool, if you become friends with the pen tool, you're going to master this program and it's going to be amazing. Here we are in Illustrator and we've created a new document with an empty page. And what I'm going to do is demonstrate this and then I'm going to give you a lesson to practice. But before we do that, I want you to think about beginning skating, okay? Whether you've skated or not, or if you watched a video of people skating um, or skiing, you know, but skating is really my metaphor here. So put on the skates 
if you're five years old, if you're 20 years old and you've never skated before, you're going to one foot, one foot, one foot, one foot, one foot, right? You're going to just kind of be delicately moving. As you get more comfortable skating, you want to think about stepping and gliding, stepping and gliding, step, glide, step, glide. So the figure eight in the skating rink is really intended to let you do that, where you skate with one foot, you push off, and you let the other foot go, and you're gliding, right? And then you put the other foot down, and you're gliding. All right, so let's take a look at how this works in Illustrator with a pen tool. Here's the pen tool. Now, if I click, 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 that is me learning to skate. Notice how I have these harsh lines. I want those to be curved. I want this to be less of a um, rigid shape. So let's try this again. And I'm going to turn the colors reverse from the stroke to the fill. So it's a little bit easier to see. Click and drag. So I'm going to step and glide, step and glide, step and glide, click and drag, click and drag, click and drag. Right? Okay. So the difference between these two shapes, as you can see, are the soft curved lines and the harsh angular lines. Now, sometimes you have a goal for both of these, but if you can master the technique of using the curved lines, then you'll understand how to, you know, just use the tool much faster. Okay, so before we get started in an actual lesson and practice session, what I'd like to show you is what happens with um, people that I'm usually working with on a one-on-one -on -one basis in a studio environment. Okay, so watch this video over and over again if you need to. All right, so if I click and drag, notice that there's these other dots here. So I click and drag. Now I want you to think about skating again, right? Or skiing or whatever sport that has movement. If I'm stepping and gliding with one foot out, one foot's not on the ground, I'm actually using my arms as balance, right? So I can tuck my arms in when I want to ski really fast. If I hold my arms out, I can change the angle of which way I'm going. I can, you know, it's, it's basically for me to use as balance. So what I often see is people clicking on this handle button. Now these are imaginary lines, these handles. They don't actually exist as you can see by the other shape that we made, okay? The, the lines are purely for editing purposes and it kind of is showing you the shape between, you know, the mathematical space between the two things, okay? So the next part is where we start to edit this, right? So you have two different selection tools. You have the black filled and then the white or empty selection tool. So the black one, the solid one, think about that. The solid one is gonna move my shapes. Okay, it's going to move my shapes. The empty or white one is going to edit my paths. But notice how I click on that and it goes from uh, solid dots to white dots, right? Empty dots. If I click over here, it is a solid, solid dot. That means that even though I'm on this empty white arrow, I'm going to move the object itself because these dots are solid. So when you want to edit, you want to go into clicking on the path so that you can move the anchor itself, okay? All right, so let's check on this one. 
what I'm going to do with my arms is adjust how the curve works. So you can see that because the, the anchor has two arms to it, it's going to affect the curve in both ways. So I can pull the curve, pull the arms, you know, far away, or I can tuck them in and be close. Now, if I tuck one arm all the way in, then I can kind of create this smooth and angled um, point in my shape. Okay. Now, if I go to the black arrow, I can't do any of that. I'm just moving the object itself. So the white arrow is the editing tool. And you have to click on the path for it to be able to be edited. Now, you might want to ask as well, well, okay, so if I do this, step, 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 how do I make one of these anchors, one of these, a curve instead of a straight? That's actually um, a tool here under the pen tool. So all of the tools have, if you, if you notice this little triangle in the right-hand side of each of the tools, those have, mean it has more things in the drawer. So I'm going to click on this, and if I need to, you can see that there's a little bar here, this little handle. So the drawer will stay open if I need it to, and I can use it like this. So I can add points, I can subtract points, and I can change the direction of the point. So here, I'm going to click on this and drag. You have to drag it for it to work. So now I've changed that to a curvilinear shape while the rest of these stay more geometric and harsh. Okay. If I don't want to do that, I just click it back. So that's the other way I can do that. So over here, I can change one of my anchor paths and it makes it a sharp angle. Or if I hit undo, it'll change that. But if I can want to just flip it back, I click and drag on that. Now, the other thing that I notice is that um, in this lesson that I'm going to show you in a second, so I'll reiterate this, is that oftentimes people will click, 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 and have lots of tiny, tiny dots, lots of dots. You don't need that many dots in a shape. You don't need a hundred dots in a line. You can see that you just need one dot, one dot to make a line because it's a vector. Uh, so if I enlarge this just so you can see it, and we're going to zoom in a little bit, notice all of the line, all of the dots that I have in this path. One, two, three. It's one straight line. I don't need those. So unless I'm going to use these for um, the purpose of changing my angle, right? I don't need this many dots. This is this is an extra dot here. I don't need that dot. I just need the one point to the one point. Okay. So one way to get rid of those is to click on the minus, minus, and it gets rid of those extra dots that I don't really need. Okay. So let me go back and edit this one. Maybe I want this one to kind of come in just a little bit. Whoops. Right. And this goes out. Okay. So you don't need these extra dots within the shape. So let's practice this. If I use the selection tool, I can grab everything and I'm just going to move it out here. This area that's not white, this is my paper, this is the live area, this is all my desk. It's all the stuff that's on the surface and you can see that I can have a lot of stuff on my desk. This is all of my working space. The only thing that's going to be printable is going to be on this white surface. Okay, so I'm using the command and plus and minus tool to increase and decrease. And then I'm using my shift 
or not my shift. Um, I'm using the space bar for the hand to move everything to the side. All right, so for this little lesson, we're going to use the type tool. And I want you to think of a letter that is, and usually lowercase is better, so go with like a G or an S or a capital B um, or a Q, something like that. And I'd like you to find a, t a typeface and notice how I'm using, I'm holding down my shift key. Hold the shift key or else the proportions will be smushed, right? So if I don't hold the shift key down, I'm changing and altering the type. I don't want to do that. The other way you can change the typeface size is up here. Okay, so 750, whatever. But this is a rectilinear type uh, choice, so I'm going to choose something that is more organic. Um, and scroll through. I want something with lots of curves. There's something. Okay, so I want something with curves. Now, if you haven't done my lesson about layers, then go over there and check out the layers pizza sandwiches lesson. But for now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to lock this layer down and I need a new layer. Notice the difference between the colors of the layers and anything that I make on this new layer is going to have a red frame, okay? Whereas the other one I was working with is orange. So one of the techniques in my layer uh, palette options, if I double click outside of that, I can dim my images and that only works for photographs, okay? So I'm gonna unlock this. I'm gonna make this a little bit more gray or a different color. You can make it a color, a light color. There we go, light color. That's better than dimming it. Okay, I'm gonna lock that down. It's very important to lock it. See, see, I drag and I cannot move it. If I don't lock it, then this is getting moved around and you don't want that to happen, okay? So lock your layer. The next step is I'm gonna click on layer two and I'm going to choose a different color. Uh, so let's see, layer, it's a red outline. So I'm gonna choose something that I can, I can still see both things. So I'm gonna do blue, because you're gonna see the blue and then the red outline. And over here in my color, I'm going to flip those over and it's going to be no fill and a stroke. Okay, And I want you to use the command plus zoom in on this. No need to get your eyes all strained. Okay, So zoom in. And then when you're working you can use the space bar to change it to a hand. Okay, So I'll show you that in a second. All right, so I'm gonna start here at the top. I'm right-handed, so I tend to go to the right is a little bit easier, okay? Now notice that this is one line. So what did I just say? You don't need 20 dots. That will take you forever if you go around this whole thing and have hundreds of dots. So don't do that. I need a dot here, and a dot here. See, magically one line, beautiful. And then I'm going to click and drag. So if I keep this as a stroke over here, if I keep this as a stroke, you're gonna be able to see the outline much better. Uh, so I'm gonna stroke there and then here it looks like I'm gonna need two because there's a curve right there. And then this is one solid line. So notice how I'm still active in the pen tool, but I'm clicking on my space bar and it moves it to a hand, which means I can press it. So this long stroke, all I need is one more dot. I don't need all of these dots like that because look, it's gonna make it not straight. Okay, one line. 
one easy simple line and then here there's a tiny little curve and then I'm going to follow this around. Now notice how that's not perfect. That's okay. You can come back and fix that later. Don't click on the handle. Go around. Okay, go around. Follow this. And when you're zoomed in on this, you can really see the nuance of the letter form, that it, become, it is a shape, right, that has subtleties to it. Okay, it's okay that I'm not exact right there. I'm going to come back and edit this when I'm done. In fact, it's good to be not perfect, right? That's too much pressure to be perfect. Okay, so now I've filled this. So the other thing with vectors that you want to remember is that uh, closed shapes are going to be better. If it's an open shape, it's going to create all these like mixed matchy, like weird lines. I can tell that it's a closed shape when I change and flip that around, okay? All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back through, and this is my little test, so I can even zoom in a little bit farther if I need to, be microscopic on this. All right, so I can pull this, pull this out, and then Get as, getting as close as I can, but you know, it's just practice. It doesn't have to be perfect. Okay. And here's where I'm going to bring my handle in closer to my arm, closer to my body. Okay, it's messing up that one. So I'm going to bring that in. All right. Okay, that one goes up a little bit. This one is a little lopsided. Okay. Now, if I were doing this, if we were doing this one on one, I would be sitting behind you, and we would be looking at the the delicate intricacies of these lines. So, know that someone who's been doing design for a long time. Their eyes are trained really well to be able to see these flaws or little hiccups in the line very easily. When this is zoomed out, someone who's been doing this a long time can see where there's little bumps in the road. Okay, So this is about practice, not necessarily being perfect right off the bat. And that's why I like to go in and edit this exercise because it, it trains your eye to be able to see how a curve works. Okay. Here, I'm just going to pull that in just a little bit and then it, it, it flops me up. Now, this is, a, this is a situation if I can't get the curve quite right, then I can easily just add another point here. Okay, so I can add another point if I need to. All right, using my space bar, and I'm just moving around. I'm gonna go back to the edit, the edit tool. Okay.
When you're working on the computer, it's really important to have a window or something that you could actually, about every 15 minutes, you're staring at the computer screen. A long time ago, when I graduated from college, within six months, my eyeglass prescription got significantly worse because I was sitting on the computer um, and I wasn't relaxing my eyes and I wasn't um, giving my eyes a chance to look at something far away. So my advice is, you know, when you're done with this little exercise, take a chance, look up, look across the screen, look out a window, focus on something. So you need to exercise your eyes in addition to your body and your arm. Um, you may also be sitting somewhere where you're slouching. So be conscious of your posture in this. You know, is your, is your chair the right height or the right type of chair? For you to feel comfortable because if you're staring and then your your neck is all squished and you know strained for, by the fact that your chair and your computer aren't the right height it's all called ergonomics um, you want to make sure that you're not going to be in pain uh, if you're going to be doing something like this for a long time you're sitting at this desk eight hours a day or however long it is Make sure that you take breaks for your arms. You don't get carpal tunnel in your in your wrists. Um, your eyeballs need a break. So when we're done this little lesson, I want you to take a deep breath. And you're going to look out the window if you haven't already done so. Right. So I'm just pulling this out to test to see where the line is. So I can I can move it down this way or I can move it that way. Um, so it's all in just the editing. Now some people are going to say, Val, you know, like this is, that's stupid because I already know how I can make an outline of that letter form. And, you know, it takes two seconds, not even two seconds. It's just a click of a button. And my answer to that is, yes, I know that. But this is about calisthenics. This is about um, practicing, right? So... This is about hand-eye coordination, looking at shapes and figuring out, look at that, I made a straight line, but it, it is kind of uh, off slightly. This is about, um, you know, not being perfect, but it's about learning how the tool works. So if I just went the shortcut, um, you know, I've been using illustrator a long time and I'm still not perfect at this um, so I think that it helps give you those calisthenics that you need to be able to um, use the tool and not just always go with just kind of the default right so I can make outlines of this and and when I'm in a hurry and I have the type that I mean I'm going to make outlines of type when I'm exporting it or whatever I'm not going to do this to every single letter form but you know, maybe I find an image that I really love and I can't find that letter form. You know, it's an old letter somewhere or a sign that I've taken a picture of. And I really love the letter G on that or something. And I need to trace it. I need to, I need to do this to that because it doesn't exist anywhere. So the other use for this is to, you know, how I'm going to make shapes. This is all about using the vector pen tool to make shapes, okay? So the next step of this is to finish this inside, okay? So before I do that, I want to just show you that you can flip this around, all right? So I'm gonna give you a little bonus um, information and we're actually going to use the, the Pathfinder tool in this lesson as well. Shh, don't tell anyone. Um, Pathfinder tool is your friend. Okay, so 
if you go to watch the lesson on pizza and sandwiches, this is going to become really relevant. I want you to go over there to understand layers. It's really important that I've done the outside first because I'm going to use the Pathfinder tool here in a few minutes and you can see that I can combine, I can cut out, I can subtract and get what's in the overlap of the objects and I can punch a hole. Okay, So the way that Illustrator works is layers are going to be sandwiched on top of each other. You're making a sandwich. So go over to that video and I'm going to talk about that in more detail so you understand that concept. But there's a reason why I've asked you to do the outside first. So now we're going to go to the inside shape and again, I only need one dot to combine that. I don't need a hundred dots. And then here, you know, don't click on the handle. You just resist the temptation. Just resist the temptation of that little handle there. I'm going to go a little bit farther. Okay, and I'm going to come back and edit this later. It's okay to make mistakes. It's not a mistake. It's something that I'm just putting down and it's, you know, like it's not solidified yet. It hasn't been cooked in the oven yet. It's not solid. I can go back in and edit this. All right, I'm gonna click on that. I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit. This is easier to see. Here's, here's where the anchor, it was a step and a drag, right? So it's not like step, step, step. It has a half a, half my arm is tucked in. And this one I'm going to pull in a little bit closer to get my curve better. Okay, so now we've we've kind of graduated from the step, 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 step in the skating, and we're on that eight. We're on that crazy eight pattern skating for five hours because we're so obsessed with our brand new skates. We want to just practice, practice, practice. Uh, so that's what we're doing right now. We're on that S curve and we're just going in and, and really making this perfect. Okay, this one is still not that down just a little bit. There we go. Okay, so getting used to how the length of the arms is if I was on that skate eight figure in the skating rink. I can pull this down, turn my arms so that I'm actually gliding around that eight pattern. Whoops. Whoops, can happen. Command Z is undo. So notice how that twisted. We don't need to do spins. We don't need to twist. I just am trying to use my anchor point here. So if that does twist, it's okay. Just hit undo um, and, and go back to where it was. It just means that you grab the handle and the arms and then they, they tucked in. You know how figure skaters tuck their arms in when they're spinning. That's exactly what it just did to me. Okay. Great. Like I said, I've been using Illustrator a long time and I love the pen tool. But this, this is definitely, um, you know, helps you to be refined. And it's always good to just go back and practice um, tracing. I love just the drawing aspect of this. And, um, you know, I don't need to be perfect, but I'm trying to get this image. Okay, this is the last one that's not correct. You know? Okay, so train your eye to look at shapes. 
That's why this is a good lesson too. Now if I um, flip the colors around, you're going to notice that it's going to be blue and the other one is blue as well. Let me just fix this last one, this one here. Okay, so the outside is blue, which means that the fill is going to be blue. So I'm going to change this color. And for kicks and for what we're doing, it could be white or it could be yellow. Let's do yellow or whatever color you want in that palette. And then I'm going to click over here on the black arrow and I'm going to click on the outside shape and I'm going to flip that around. So what I want to do, this is the counter of the space inside the letter form. I actually want to be able to see white rather than this egg color. And if I, if I make a rectangle or another shape and I make that in a different color, and again, I want you to go back and look at the layers uh, tutorial I'm going to send this to the back. What I want to be able to do is see through this letter form. I want to actually see that building or whatever it is in the background, right? This is the sunset, the building, the car, the people, whatever it is that I want to see through this shape. I need to use the Pathfinder tool. Okay, so you get an extra lesson here in this exercise. So just move that up out of the way um, for this experiment, for this exercise. Okay, and then I'm going to use my black arrow tool, my selection tool, and I'm going to click and drag both of those objects. Now we're on one layer. We're on the red layer. If I hide this, you can see there's the cue locked behind me. That doesn't really matter. Okay, I don't really... It's locked, so it doesn't really matter. What's important in this lesson is we're going to use the Pathfinder tool. Okay. So when you scroll over these, Illustrator and the lovely people at Adobe have done a really nice job in telling you what this is. So unite means that I'm going to combine those. I don't want to do that. I just got I just lost the center object. Okay. This one, whatever is on top is going to chop out what is underneath, so that's an option. This one is the intersection, so you can see that it's gonna just get rid of all the hard work you just did. And then this one is exclude, okay? So exclude and intersect are, or minus front, sorry, minus front, are somewhat similar, uh, except in this one, you can see that it recommends that that is if the object goes off and they're not exactly centered, right? This is the one that I call punch a hole. So I'm going to click on this. All right. So magically one little second, split second, the letter form of the Q turns to yellow because the layer, the layering of Illustrator, even though I'm on one layer, the layering of the objects that I've created are like a sandwich, one on top of the other. So it takes the properties of what is on top versus what is underneath. Okay, But you achieved your goal here, as you can see, that I can see through it. And that is the goal, that I can see through this object. Now, you can test out the notion of scalability with a vector. So this is my last request of you. Please, 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 please. Always, always hold the shift key down when you are scaling objects, okay? I'm gonna do this without holding the shift key down. Notice how it's smushing it and it's it's it just made that a, a D instead of a Q. So to retain the inherent 
qualities and the beauty of whatever the shape that you've created. It could be even your face, you know, it could be, it could be um, something that's really important that doesn't need to be distorted. So hold the shift key down, okay, so I can scale this. Now, if I want to make a duplicate of this, I'm going to hold the option key and then I'm going to duplicate it, which I also think is important so that you always maintain the original that you're working with that you can go back to and then you can scale, right? And I can make another one and I can do it on top and scale it here. So check out some of my other pattern or other lessons about patterns and some of the other little fun tips that you can use once you've gotten this vector uh, really kind of polished up so that you're not training wheels, you're stepping and gliding, stepping and gliding using the pencil. Good luck.